All right, uh, here's welcome uh, to the youth ministry course. Hope you all are doing well. Thank you for joining in. Um, we get started. Uh, can I request Kanan? Could you just uh, start us off with a word of prayer, please? Okay. Either Kanan can hear me or he's not there. Hey, Thomas, uh, do you mind us starting us off with a word of prayer, please? You can hear me, right? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Sally, please. Yeah, go ahead, Karen. Father God, we come before your throne once again, Father God, and we want to say thanking you, Father God, to your promises and your word and your, your present, Father God, thanking you. Father God, give your wisdom and knowledge that we can understand the subject and notes, Father God, and apply to your kingdom work, Father God. Help us to understand the subject. The timing and the, all the students are meeting to your hand, Father God, take care of every side. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for welcoming to our rescue. Uh, okay. Um, let's just continue with where we left off in the youth ministry, right? Um, in the last class, we, uh, we saw the important things uh, from in chapter one as to how the world uh, defines uh, youth, who are the youth. Uh, chapter one was all about why is youth ministry important. In addressing that question, we saw who the youth are right? and what the, uh, what the world uh, you know, defines and describes them as. Okay? And uh, we saw why is it important, uh, you know, the importance of youth and their role and impact in our society. Okay? And we saw that uh, India is one of the youngest nations, and it's going to be that way for at least another 15, 20 years. And so uh, we are rich, uh, you know, when it comes to young people in our nation. And, and that led to this last question as to what is the church going to do about it, right? And what does the Bible say about, uh, about the youth and, you know, the importance that God gave to raising up young leaders and the heart that he has for young people, teenagers, and, and the youth. So uh, that's what we covered in uh, chapter one. Okay, uh, chapter two is all, it's, it's going to be about uh, youth ministry with a vision. That's, that's the title of the chapter, the youth ministry with a vision, right? Uh, I wanna, Check again if uh, or if I am audible. If everybody is uh, able to hear me. I know Prince said, I know Kiran can hear me, but there is Kanan and Thomas. Yeah, I want to make sure that you okay. Cool. Okay. Um, great. Uh, so youth ministry with a vision. Uh, so in in your own words, what, I mean, what do you uh, what do you think? What comes to your mind when you hear the word vision? Why is it important? Kiran, Prince, Thomas, Kanan, vision, what comes to mind when you first hear that word? Planning for okay. future. Planning for future, okay. Indivisionary, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks, Kiran. What is what is it? You don't have to give just one answer, you can give multiple. Okay. Vision, uh, what is the difference between the vision and sight? Okay, so look, so youth ministry with a vision, it's, it's a simple 
it's like you know what Prince said is planning for future. One thing is to look at it that way, right? And all of you uh, would have planned something about your life, okay? But then that would, part of the plan could be getting a degree from the Bible College, if you Bible College, right? Uh, it's like okay, I want to get there. I want to become a pastor. I want to pastor the church at so and so age, or I want to teach, uh, you know, theological subjects, and uh, you know. Uh, in my city or etc wherever so you have that vision that goal and uh, and so getting a degree Bible college degree is is it's part of that you know it's a mission kind of thing to fulfill that vision so you because you have a vision for your life right you have you planned ahead you've seen okay this is where I want to go this is where I want to be at say in three years from now in four years from now in five years from now okay so that's basically uh, having like a uh, uh, a long-term plan so that's interpreted as vision right um so and if you look at the notes and uh, i can share uh, i share Okay, so we see here uh, a simple definition for vision. It's given as a vivid uh, to imaginative conception or anticipation. Okay, conception, that's conceived. Conception, another word is okay. There's an imagination in your head. So you, you're seeing, that's another vision. Okay, so I prefer to define it as a goal that you have set out to accomplish, right? Um, it's exactly um, like what Prince uh, said, okay? To define it as a goal, like a future plan, okay, that you have set to accomplish. That means you are you're going to fulfill it. That's the dictionary definition. Um, so, in our context of youth ministry, now this is applicable for every area of ministry, like a vision for the worship ministry in the church, etc., uh, etc. Et but uh, since we are talking about youth ministry, uh, in our context, if you as a worship ministry, if your um, if the youth ministry of your church uh, does not have a vision like a plan, okay, this is where I want uh, the youth ministry to be at, like the young people to uh, be equipped with so and so things. This is what I want to do. Uh, if you don't have that, then it is going to be uh, it is going to be hard to guide your team, like your pastoral team or your youth, um, your core team, etc. Right, etc. And the direction you want them to go, right? Look at those words, okay? Direction you want them to go, right? Um, so, uh, I mean, you, I'm sure you've heard uh, this old saying, right? A blind cannot lead another blind, right? A blind person cannot lead another blind person. Why? Because the person, the blind person who's leading in the front does not have vision. So they don't know where they are going. But because they do not know where they are going, the, pe the person behind them or the people behind them also don't know where they are going. So they are all like blindly following. You heard, we must have heard those things, right? So if we do not have a vision for your ministry, for your youth ministry, uh, then it's bec it becomes very hard to direct, to lead your team, right? From the front, okay? So lacking a goal or a vision will also make it difficult to measure accomplishments okay what does this mean uh if lacking a goal or vision will also make it difficult to measure accomplishments measuring is okay so you have these numbers so let's just say okay first year uh okay and you are my team i say okay you know kiran uh thomas kanan prince okay for first year this is what uh, this is what I want us to you know do with youth ministry. I want to make sure have we have some uh, outreaches. Uh, uh, every month there has to be a youth meeting, or every Sunday there has to be a youth meeting every week, right? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So we have a small goals, right? Okay, every every Sunday or Saturday we're going to have a youth meeting, and every Wednesday we'll have a youth Bible study. 
And every fourth Saturday of the month, we will go out into the city and uh, do street evangelism. Okay, so we've kind of set some targets. Now, in January, we started we start doing this. And at the end of the year, in December, we will come together as a team and we'll discuss, okay, now we are going to measure, right? Okay, how many uh, youth meetings did we have in this month, in this month, and so and so, okay? And how many uh, and how many street evangelisms did we do? Okay, and then you're going to measure and check. Okay, your your the numbers, the accomplishments. It's like okay, you know, uh, we missed out a couple of months uh, for so and so reason because we uh, because of this we could not do that, and because of the COVID uh, pandemic, <laughs> you know, we could not do street evangelism. Okay, whatever uh, you know, you are able to measure, right? Uh, in a, at the end of the year. But if you did not have any vision, it's like, ah, okay, chalta hai, okay, let's see how, you know, uh, as Christians, I think we can, uh, we have a tendency to use this word, so like, you know, we, uh, we'll go as the Lord leads, as the Lord, uh, you know, we, we use that as an excuse not to plan. Okay, it's just a lazy excuse, basically, right? It's not to plan, not to, you know. Um, so having a vision, for the youth ministry in particular, will not only one help you lead your team, direct them, but it will also help you measure the accomplishments. Right? Uh, how do you know if you are uh, if you are ever reaching something? Right? So, if you don't have a goal of having a youth ministry with no vision, is like running on a spiritual treadmill. Okay, uh, it's like running on a spiritual treadmill. So we all know what is a treadmill, isn't it? Right? You've seen in the gyms, some, in some people's homes, they are running, but they are in the same place. Right? Okay, so, um, you know, leading a ministry without a vision is like uh, running on a spiritual treadmill. You know, you're trying to do a lot of things. You are doing something. Um, but then you're in the very same place. There is no growth. There is no, uh, yeah, there is no growth. Okay. There is no real momentum. Okay. Um, so uh, that's the importance. And I think we've uh, already kind of captured uh, the importance of having a vision uh, for the youth ministry. Okay. And uh, that is the kind of question uh, I asked when uh, I started uh taking over the youth ministry at AKC, right? uh, I had to ask myself, okay, what, what, should, what is the purpose of this youth ministry at APC? And then you, you go and seek uh, you, and you pray, Father, you know, Lord, what do you want to see? Uh, what do you want to do with youth ministry in our church? Uh, it's important to ask that question, right? Why? Why do we exist? Why are we doing this? What is our purpose, etc. Right? And so I began with I began this journey of being a youth pastor with that question: What is the purpose, right? Um, and do we just meet for you know fun and games? We come together, get together, uh, spend time, laugh, uh, and go. Is that the purpose of it, right? Because we can do that anywhere. We do that with our friends. We go to our relatives' home. How, you know, and just have a time of get together, right? But youth ministry is something more than that. It's not just time of getting together, you know, and having fun. And but there is growth. There's equipping, right? There are this, there is discipleship as involved, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So, by starting with that question as to what is the purpose of the youth ministry, um, we we began by you know just uh, leave, coming to these five points, these five pillars, so to speak, okay? Uh, no purposes that we could create on our own be more complete than the five God has already divinely created for us, okay? Now, this is how, uh, you know, we started at APC, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be your church vision as well, or this has to be the same approach that you do, Okay. Uh, you can contextualize it, see what suits best for your ministry, for your church, etc. Okay, so um, these were the, these were the five kind of pillars that you know God kind of divinely created for us, which is evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. 
So on their own, just ministry, discipleship, I mean, they, they don't mean, uh, they might not mean a lot. Okay? It doesn't seem like it, it's too general uh, to understand. Okay? But let's start putting it in context okay? and see you know, where, where is all that coming from. Okay? So those five purposes are built around these two, uh, uh, two great uh, scriptures. One is the great commandment and the other is the great commission. Okay, so let's take a look at great commandment from Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 40, what it says. Jesus replied, so the, I mean, if you read the verses before this, the 36, 35, 36, you see a bunch of uh, Pharisees, uh, you know, people uh, of the law coming and asking, uh, you know, not asking questions, but questioning Jesus as to what is the greatest law. And Jesus replies to them this way, he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. Okay? That's Matthew 22, right? Uh, but I just... Uh, I'm just turning to the book of uh, you know, James for a second, very quickly. Um, okay, so it, it, you know, in James chapter two, verse eight. Okay, James chapter two, verse eight. This is what it says: If you re if you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. You are done right. Okay, now. James is also quoting the scripture and uh, from James chapter 2 verse 8 and now he's calling this great commandment which is love your neighbor as yourself. He's using another set of words that says that is the royal law. Okay. A royal law simply is referred to a law that has come from the king's throne. Right? When, a, when the king has decreed a law saying okay, you know, uh, for example, uh, in the medieval uh, period in England, uh, the, no one was supposed to hunt the deers of the forest. All the deers of the forest was uh, belonged to the king. And if ever, anybody hunted the deer, they were called as the outlaws. Right? Uh, Robin Hood is one of those stories. Okay, um, So that was the law from the throne, from the king. Nobody is supposed to hunt the deers. Okay, that's a royal law. Okay, now if imagine how it would be if we were to treat this thing as the royal law, like James is saying. Okay, He's saying the second is like it: love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. Let's move on. And next we have the great commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 8, 28, 19. Okay, so we know these scriptures. They're very familiar to us, right? But when you translate it, when you break it down, okay, sentence by sentence, line by line, this is what it means. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, is simply can be replaced with the word worship. That's what it is. Loving a Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That is worship. And then love your neighbor as yourself. Ministry. Okay? Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? And reminded of another scripture. Uh, please bear with me. I'm going to Hebrews. Um, Yeah, okay. Okay. I, uh... Okay, I, I forget the words, uh, my apologies. But in Hebrews, uh, I think either ch chapter 6, I think, um, it says, you, you, uh, I've seen the way how much you love me by 
by the deeds that you uh, that you were doing for others. Okay, I'm paraphrasing it. Okay, this is God saying, you have shown me how much you love me by serving others. Okay, that is translated as ministry. Ministry is simply means serving, isn't it? Right? So love your neighbor as yourself is so important. That's a royal law. It says, okay, if you serve one another, that means you you are expressing how much you love me. Okay, so that's ministry. Are you guys with me? I hope you are. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the two things from the first verse, the great commandment. And now from great commission, we see you go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. That's translated as evangelism. Baptizing them. What does baptism mean? Okay, baptism simply means immersion. Okay, that's full covered completely. Okay, so that's what happens when you go under the water is you're immersed, isn't it, when you take the baptism. So bringing them in, in other words, that's what it is, okay? So baptizing them simply means after you've evangelized to them, you're now bringing them into the covenant, into the fellowship of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, and then teaching them to obey. That is discipleship. Okay, so you see how beautiful it is that it doesn't just end with evangelism. With evangelism is followed by fellowship that you're bringing them in. And that is followed by discipleship. So there is a clear progression, right? Worship. We love God above all else. And then minister to one another, serve one another. That is communicated with loving your neighbor as yourself and then go and make disciples bring them in and teach them to obey okay so with this five things uh was like the five pillars that kind of give us giving us the youth, the youth ministry at apc a purpose to work towards to you know to progress to grow in, in these areas okay now, uh, just a few pointers, and you can go through these scriptures, and I'm just elaborating it a little bit more for us. Uh, you know, and we've studied quite a bit on worship in our first years, right? And uh, it, there are so many things. It's not just about songs and music, but celebrating God's presence and honoring Him with our lifestyle is worship. Praying is worship. Hearing the Word, reading the Word, meditating on the Word of God, is worship, right? baptizing, giving, communion, all of that is part of worship. Okay, In all these ways, we are expressing and telling, I'm loving the Lord with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then we see ministry, right? meeting needs with love. Okay? God has blessed every believer with special gifts to be used for ministry. A student youth ministry shouldn't have to wait until they are adults to minister. Okay, it's very important that you know we choose in our churches. We don't wait for them to become adults for them to get them to start serving. Okay, you get them young. Okay, you, you teach them to serve in the church. Okay, whatever it is, right? Uh, in and I'm sure most of us can relate to it, right? In my teenage years. Uh, uh, me and so many of my friends, we were the first ones to be at church on, on a Saturday, setting up sound and whatnot, and the last ones to leave on a Sunday. Um, you know, so you don't have to be wait till you are a professional or whatnot, till you're old or adults to start serving, but get them young, right? A healthy youth ministry it will constantly encourage the youth to discover their gifts and put them in practice through ministry and mission opportunities. Mission strip, okay, that's another thing. We'll, we'll talk more about it in just a bit. Um, when the purpose of ministry is applied, when the purpose of serving, in other words, is applied, you will graduate youth students, youth ministries, rather than program attendees, okay? When the purpose of ministry, that's serving one another, is applied, you will graduate. So the youth are no longer just people who have come to your programs, but now they are youth ministers as well. Okay? 
um, student ministers won't graduate from their faith when they graduate from the youth ministry. Okay. So ministry is super, super important uh, in part. In other words, serving is very important uh, in, in ministry, in youth ministry. Uh, evangelism, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with those who don't yet have a personal relationship with him. We all know what evangelism is all about, right? Um, the, pay attention. This is the most weakly expressed purpose, right? This uh, Why? Because it is difficult to fulfill on a program level. Now, we can just say okay, we're going to have an evangelism outreach. Uh, it, we don't know how many of them are going to you know, give their lives to Jesus. We just can't have a certain number, right? Um, and then it is very threatening, okay? It's like uh, on a personal level, especially now with all these uh, uh, anti-conversion bills coming up, it's it's very threatening, isn't it? Like, oh, how do we go about and share the gospel, right? Um, so, uh, right, cha as challenging as it is, it's always been challenging to bring the gospel from Jesus' time. But we continue to ask God for wisdom and guidance. And uh, the adult leadership must model the purpose of evangelism. Okay, uh, when this purpose is evident in a youth ministry, growth will happen not because of an evangelistic program, but because of evangelistic students. Right, as is, I hope you're paying attention. Right, so when the when this purpose is evident, when this thing, when the heart uh, of evangelism is caught by every individual, growth, okay, growth will happen. Right, the numbers will increase, not because of one evangelistic program. I say, okay, um, not because you had one evangelism outreach program or a conference, but the growth will happen because of evangelistic students or young people who are coming, uh, who are part of youth ministry, who are youth ministers themselves, right? As we read in the previous point. So that's evangelism. And fellowship. God did not intend for Christians to live in isolation. We know that, right? Um, God, we were built, we were made for community. And I think God made that point very clear when he said it is not good for man to be alone, right? So we need each other. God did not intend for Christians to live in isolation. Isolation means all by yourself. Uh, you know, I don't want anybody else. I'm just, I just want to be by myself. We were not made for that, okay? But in fellowship with other believers and to be identified as the body of Christ, to be identified as the body of Christ, okay? Um, and then discipleship. So the, the building up or strengthening of believers in their quest to be like Christ. Now we can we can talk an entire month on just this topic of, or more than a month on just this topic of discipleship, right? Uh, the importance of discipleship and how discipleship was during the time of Jesus. Okay, it was a huge moment during the time of Jesus, especially in the town called Galilee. Okay, where every town would have a synagogue and every synagogue would have a head rabbi and, uh, and every rabbi will have disciples. Okay, uh, and it, it, it's, it's wonderful. Like I said, we can talk about discipleship a lot, like the foundations of it, the background, the history of discipleship, how it came to be. Uh, and how it was during, in their culture, in their context. It's wonderful. And that, no wonder Jesus, uh, you know, stressed uh, on the importance of discipleship, why he took those people under his wings uh, to change the world. Okay, so if Jesus chose discipleship, and, you know, the disciples, and the process uh, of making disciples and building them is called discipleship, isn't it? And so if Jesus chose the method of discipleship to change the world, uh, how much more we need, do we need to understand the importance of discipleship? Yes. Um, so it's important to have all these five folds um, in, 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 in a ministry, in the, in, the youth, in the youth ministry, right? So uh, I hope you guys are with me uh, and listening. Uh, but so the challenge was, okay, now we have, 
we we have these five purposes that's mentioned you know god given purpose worship ministry evangelism fellowship and discipleship okay uh, how do we make it a little bit more interesting uh you know how how can we be a little bit more creative and communicate what what this is all about uh, to not just to the core team but also to the youth who will be joining uh, who will be attending uh, your uh, youth meetings etc right so we did this exercise with all of the above how do you come up with a purpose or a vision statement with all of the above using you know worship evangelism ministry etc we wanted to come up with a, a, a vision statement right and you know in uh, if you been coming to apc or watching it online you know every sunday we play the vision of apc the vision of all people's church is to be the salt and light in the city of bangalore and the nation of india and the nations right so that's the vision statement okay so it's very clear we are called to be the salt and light so now that we have a purpose in youth ministry like worship uh, evangelism etc etc we want to come i have to come up with a vision statement now we have to be very careful not to come up with a vision statement just for the sake of coming up with a vision statement but and and you know kind of separate the whole thing from the church's main vision it had to be in line with the church's vision right it had to be in line with the church's vision right just because we are uh, another wing of the church let's say youth ministry we can't just take off and say okay that's the vision of the church and we are on doing something else you know how do we a uh, plan and bring it together right so uh we use this a few key pointers uh and uh, i think it's wonderful for you also to work with your core team uh to come up with a, a vision statement do it as an exercise okay it's important for you all to come together and brainstorm okay so a few pointers on how you can come up with your own vision statement is first thing keep it simple okay nothing fancy it doesn't have to be complicated keep it simple and make it meaningful okay it should be action oriented what is that or even comes and don't do that kind of i can know <laughs> it's uh it should be done right okay it's like um it should make me want to do right a uh, word became flesh right john one one says right the word became flesh right it 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 became right that's a verb isn't it so there has to be action involved right it should be action oriented it should be compelling right okay you know so i am called to go and uh, you know uh, evangelize i am called to go and make disciples so it should be compelling okay it should make me want to do things so these are the four things to keep in mind uh, you can add more uh, this is just a few pointers okay on how to come up with a uh, with a purpose statement mission statement and and now that we have these five words it's a worship fellowship evangelism discipleship ministry uh you can look at something called uh the alternative words for worship right like say uh, you can start you know look go to the dictionary uh, online say okay what are the synonym words the similar words or alternative words that can be used instead of say worship or fellowship or evangelism discipleship what so we listed out a few synonyms alternative words for worship uh we can put okay you can also use the word exalt or passion or offer or fellowship we use enjoy encourage care or evangelism uh we use the word expose or exposure right spread reach discipleship equip share develop ministry can be uh, other words that can be used is experience service and serving Okay, now there can be more words, guys. I'm just putting a few things here. So now, now that we have all of this sorted, this is the exercise uh, me and with the my core team did. Okay, now how do we use all of these? How do you, how do we use these pointers? How do we keep it simple? How do we make it meaningful? Uh, how do we make it action oriented? And how do we make it compelling? Using all these, uh, you know, 
um, synonym words. How do we do it? Okay. For example, you have all these words. It can look like this. The goal of our student ministry or, or youth ministry is to expose. What is expose? See, evangelism. Okay, so we are using evangelism without using the word evangelism, right? So the goal of our student ministry or youth ministry is to expose, okay, evangelize teenagers to God's love, to equip, right? See that? To equip. In other words, we are saying discipleship, to disciple them or to equip them to exalt God, to worship God. Enjoy other believers here. Enjoy, enjoy fellowship other believers and experience the work of the ministry, right? And experience the work of the ministry. That is ministry experience, right? So this is just an example. This is not yet yet a vision statement. So um, this is an example that we put together. But so using the same exercise, this is the purpose statement. Uh, we came up with the APC team. The, the APC youth ministry exists to equip, you know, equip and empower, that's discipleship there. Uh, equip and empower young people to become true worshippers of Jesus who love people. Okay, Love is the alternate synonym that was used for okay? uh, evangelism. That, that's another word we came up with, okay? and spread evangelism, okay? Spread his love in the city of Bangalore and the nation of India. Okay, you see, it's, it is it is pretty much in line with the church's vision as well, right? So the youth ministry, the APC youth ministry exists to equip and empower young people to become true worshipers of Jesus who, who love people and spread his love in the city of Bangalore and the nation of India. Okay, so now there is a vision. Now there is a direction. Okay, now we know what we're going to do. And so every program that we plan, every youth meeting, weekly youth meeting, monthly youth meeting, youth camps, youth retreat, youth conference, etc., etc., any program that we want to do will revolve around these things. Okay? Now, uh, I want you to listen to this very carefully. And we will talk about this in the next chapter too as well. But I thought I'd mention it right away. Is you cannot achieve all of these five things in one program. It will become a very chaotic program. Right? You can't try to. So you plan a, a program according to a, you know the uh, who your audience is. Like I said, we will learn more about it in the next chapter. Okay, but I just wanted to make, make that put that out here. Okay, so we have a clear vision and a direction. And so it's not enough for us to have a vision statement. It's not just enough to have, uh, you know, to have a clear idea of what we want to do. And it's not just enough to uh, even just explain it to your youth in your church. Hey, this is our vision, this is what we want to do. Okay, now the next question is, how are we going to do that? Right, we address the why, we address the what, and the next question is, okay, right, so how are we going to do that? How, how are you going to equip me? How are you going to, uh, you know, empower me to become a true worshiper? How are you going to equip, how are you going to teach me to spread his love in the city, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So to communicate that to our young people, uh, we tell them, hey, like, hey, we have some of these platforms uh, or events or programs that happen in church where all of this can be addressed, like all of these five purposes uh, you know, can be addressed. For example, we have something called, a platform called Worship Nights, where you can come and be part of, where you can you know, just worship Jesus and become his worshiper, spending time with him. That's one platform. Uh, we, we, when we have a weekend school of praise and worship, you can come and be part of it and learn about praise and worship. Right? And that what it's going to do, it's going to equip you, empower you to become true worshippers of Jesus, right? Okay. Where's the other platform for me to serve? Uh, you know, to be, um, 
to serve one another. How do I love my neighbor, basically, isn't it? So for that, we have so many volunteering teams, right? Uh, we have at least 19 volunteering teams at APC, where you can be part of the ushering team, the connect team, the member care team, uh, and the list goes on, right? The setup team, et cetera, et cetera. And some of you have been part of it, right? So you know, what are you doing there is you are serving one another. That's a platform where you can, you know, love people, isn't it? And then mission strip, when we go on a mission strip, we go to a different church, different city, uh, and serve other church, serve other people there. That's another perfect platform to, um, uh, to learn about ministry and serving, right? And then evangelism, we have platforms where you can go and spread his love in our city is one of a couple of platforms is Campus Elevates. That's where we go to schools and colleges. Uh, you know, I have these programs. Again, you guys have been part of it. And have some outreach programs. And, and when it comes to fellowship, we have platforms like life groups, monthly youth meeting, pit stoppers, combined youth meeting, youth camps, right? Uh, life groups, some say, is the life of the church. Right? It's the life of the ministry. That's where, you know, the weekly church happens. Okay, that's uh, the time of fellowship and growth, etc., etc. And then you have discipleships, where you equip and empower. Once again, that happens in life groups. And not just that, we have there's so many resources available on our church website. Right? We have the church app where you can watch videos, uh, listen to five minute, uh, you know, devotionals, and you have, we have ABC publications. So uh, all of those resources can be used to equip and empower ourselves. Uh, we are um, sitting on a gold mine, as what I tell my uh, young people is that it, there's so much of resources, abundance of resources if we just dig deeper and search and meditate and make use of it. Okay, so after we've addressed why and the what and the how, we, you know, we've communicated to our young people saying it's like, hey, these are the ways and different ways that you can come and be part of and be part of this vision, be part of this growth process, be part of this purpose, etc. etc. Okay. And so, uh, you know, let's not just be an ordinary ministry, uh, just, you know, getting things done, going with the wind, you know, just one day at a time and whatnot. Uh, but get a vision for your area of ministry and take it to another level. Yeah. Um, I just leave with this thought. Um, now, this is Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Amos 3, 7. The sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan, right? That's vision, right? Revealing his plan to his servants. The sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants. So what does God want our ministry, organization, team to look like in three to five years from now? What does he want to look like? Okay. Um, so that's the question that you can probably try and write and ask yourself. Okay, what does God want you to do? in this area of your ministry. And I think that will be a very good place for you to start. Okay? Well, I hope you guys are doing well. And uh, any questions, guys? Let's stop presenting. Okay. Um, all right, I'll stop the recording and uh, just a second. All right, thank you all for joining. I'll see you all again tomorrow. Yeah.